Let's consider now having two functions, f and g, and they both map natural numbers to some subset of the real numbers. I can say that the function g dominates f if I can find constants m, which is a real number, and k, which is a natural number, such that the absolute value of f of n is less than or equal to m times the absolute value of g of n for all natural numbers n greater than or equal to k. Now that's a very symbol heavy definition, but all it says is that after the kth input n, from this point onwards, f in absolute value will be less than or equal to m lots of g in absolute value. So I could say that after a certain point in the long run, for n larger than k, it will be below this bound of m lots of the absolute value of g. And we say that it means that f is in big O of g. And we write that as f belongs to this set big O, which is a function of the function g. So big O of G is the set of all functions between the natural numbers and real numbers which are dominated by G. So F belongs to big O of G because F is dominated by G. In the previous video where we looked at the speeds of algorithms and specifically an algorithm to multiply a to the n to a large n. In one algorithm, we just multiplied by a, then multiplied by a, then multiplied by a, n times over, and we got there. But it grew very slowly. If I wanted to change from calculating a to the 20th power to a to the 40th power, it was 20 more steps. In the other one, I had something where it grew much more efficiently, that to double the power was only one more step, that a to the 40 was only one more step than a to the 20, and a to the 80 would only be one more step to calculate than a to the 40. So we said that one of them grew um, linearly, so n, and one of them grew logarithmically, so log base 2 of n, that it only added one more step to do something that was twice um, as complicated effectively. So we can see graphically that the linear line, the linear trend in blue, is clearly a lot larger, in this case a lot more steps, a lot slower than the uh, logarithmic line or curve that was log base 2 of n. So we can see graphically that the blue line not only is above the red line, but from some point onwards, relatively early, would always be above the red line. There is no way that the logarithmic line in red is suddenly going to take off and go above the blue linear trend. Now, it isn't that satisfying to look at this graph and say, I've proven it because I can see it's not going to. I want to be able to prove it analytically. So I can show, for example, that the function f of n is n squared dominates the function g of n, which is n plus 10. That doesn't mean that n squared is always bigger than n plus 10. But it means that from some value n equals k onwards, it is. So if I set n is 5, then f of 5 is 25, which is greater than 15, which is therefore greater than g of 5. So I've shown that if I start with um, at the fifth value, n is 5, then um, f is larger, but I want to show that f will always be larger from there on. So I want to prove now, having proven the first case, that f 
of 5 is larger than g of 5, I want to show that for every other value larger than that, if um, f of n is larger than g of n, then uh, if that's true for n equals k, I want to show it's also true for n equals k plus 1. So we get to do this by a proof by induction. I now want to prove that the function f, which was the squaring function, f of x is x squared, dominates the linear function of just adding 10, f of x equals x plus 10. So I'm going to assume that f of k is greater than or equal to g of k for some natural number k. If I work out what f of k plus 1 is, well, that's squaring k plus 1, and squaring k plus 1 gives me k squared plus 2k plus 1, which is f of k plus 2k plus 1. Similarly, working out g of k plus 1, well, g of k plus 1 is just k plus 1 plus 10, which is g of k plus 1. So I know that f of k is greater than or equal to g of k. And if that's true, then f of k plus 1 minus 2k minus 1, which is just f of k, is greater than or equal to g of k plus 1 minus 1, which is just g of k. Now, because k is a natural number and therefore is not negative, I have that f of k plus 1 is greater than or equal to g of k plus 1. So what I'm showing here is that if f is greater than or equal to g, then um, f of k plus 1 is greater than or equal to g of k plus 1. But if the function f gets above g for some k, it'll still be above after k plus 1, therefore still above after k plus 2, and so on. So, in terms of just formalising the proof, I can set m to be 1 and k to be 5, because I showed that f of 5 was greater than or equal to g of 5. So I showed it was ahead by um, k equals 5. And I can show that it never loses that lead. So I've shown that f dominates g. So g of n belongs to the set of functions dominated by f of n. So f of n is in big O of f of n. Just a couple of final notes on complexity and speed. And that's that I will tend to think of what happens in the long run, because I may have one algorithm which is very efficient for large values, which is fractionally slower for small ones, but I'll tend not to worry. Because if, for example, one algorithm with an input of n takes n plus 10 steps to reach its conclusion, and the other takes n squared, then n squared, if n is 1 or 2, will be smaller, fewer steps than n plus 10. But in the long run, if n gets bigger and bigger, something which is growing proportional to a square is eventually going to get much longer and much slower than something that grows linearly, n plus 10. I'll tend to pick the efficient algorithm, the one that works in the long run, rather than one that might be better in the most, might be quicker in the most trivial of cases, but is actually much less scalable. Because by and large, if we're talking whether it takes two steps or three steps to finish doesn't make a big difference. But if in the long run, when I give it bigger problems, it's slower, I'm going to want the one that scales efficiently. Also, when I discussed the um, logarithmically scaling one, we use log base two, which is like binary counting. That's how we'll tend to think about this, but it actually doesn't matter because if something scales logarithmically, it scales logarithmically, whatever the base. So even if I've thought or calculated the number of steps with a natural logarithm, log base e, or more engineering thinking, 
of log base 10, it doesn't actually matter because because log um, ln of 2 and, and log base 10 of 2 are just constants, it's just another constant that they can absorb into that m at the front and the definition for dominance. So if it scales logarithmically, it scales logarithmically, whatever the base.